Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Let's talk about drawing. But first, let's have a quick joke. Yay! Alright, let's go. Alright, last time we talked about um, the tools that I'm using for industrial design sketching. And this time around we're going to talk about warming up and perspective. I want to keep it short. Um, because I tried this video before and it was too long and too convoluted and also not interesting. So let's get started. Warming up for industrial designers. Uh, what we do is always lines because as an industrial designer you use a lot of lines. What you do, you put down two dots and you connect these. And connecting, you do a couple of hovers in the air and then you put it down. And don't go from point to point, so don't do this like that. No, don't do that. Really go through the points. You put the two points down and just go through. There you go. And you can also go again if, you, if you're not sure about this. And this, if you do this every day, will help you draw nice straight lines. Imagine that it's the same as when you go to the gym. You go to the gym because you want your muscles to develop and become stronger. And this is the same. Your muscles get used to this motion. And you'll just get better and better and better at it. And even uh, at this stage, I, I start off with quite bad lines. And towards the end, I start ending up with uh, better lines. Uh, important thing is, for example, for me, because I'm a little bit um, stuck to this camera position here, so I can't really rotate the paper because usually I like to rotate the paper because this is my best natural way of drawing lines. So this, this is the most comfortable for my hand. But what you have to also exercise is drawing the other way around. So if this is comfortable for me, I have to go from the other direction as well. So I'm going to do a couple of these as well. And I'm going to do coming from here as well. And you can immediately see that I'm not so confident about these lines. But this is good because then you just get better at them. And you will see, I think you will see these sort of videos quite often on YouTube, so you don't have to stick to mine. But this is really a general thing that they teach you at every industrial design class, the, the, the warming up. And this way, you really get those nice lines done. So I'm going to continue with lines now and uh, speed up the video and be right back after I'm done with this warm up. Alright, let's stop with this exercise and move on to the next one. Basically, there's, there's two sort of warm-ups that we do, lines and ellipses. And obviously, ellipses can be squeezed ellipses and they can be nice and round ones as well. Here we do the same thing. We hover a couple of times and then we put the pencil down. You can do two sort of approaches. One is try to close the loop and just make one nice line, but you can also try when you put your pen down and just hover over a couple of times until you really get to an ellipse that you really like. I, it's nicer obviously if you, if you manage to close the ellipse. There you go. So these end up to be nice. And it's really the same idea. Hover a couple of times until you have a good feel and then you close it. And don't forget to make the more squeezed ones as well. Nice trick I like to do is let me start here again. You go from a squeezed one and slowly start unsqueezing them and you almost end up with something that looks like a nicely designed barrel. There we go, look at that. Nice, no? But yeah, just let's fill up the page with more of these ellipses and I'm gonna speed up the video again. All right, now that we're done with this exercise as well, let's move on to perspective. And most of you know perspective, but just in case you know, perspective is not hard at all. Uh, I like, so usually in uh, industrial design, we use uh, two point perspective, but obviously you can use all sorts of perspective. I'm gonna talk about three, three sorts of uh, perspective. The one is a uh, one point perspective, uh, two-point perspective and three-point perspective. So let's start with one. It's basically, we have our horizon line. 
and we have one vanishing point somewhere in the middle. It doesn't matter where. But then if we draw a rectangle, see, and this is this is this is where our exercising the lines comes in handy. And then we just take the corners of the rectangle and go towards the vanishing point. And then we just close it off here with a vertical and another vertical and we close it there. And let me take a thicker, do I have, hmm, no, I'll just go over, no, there it is, all right. So I'll take this Sharpie and go over just the outer lines so you can see what we have here. This is our box. And then if we move the box around, let's see, I'm gonna draw the box here. It's the same idea. So this is, this is also where it comes in handy, what I told you about, you have to exercise drawing lines from a point that's not really comfortable for your hand. One, two, three, and I missed it, and I missed it. Well, let's call it. I'm just gonna switch position because it's not comfy at all. Ah, this goes better. There we go. See, you can see the immediate difference, how much more comfortable that is for my hand. And now I know I'm gonna take this, close it up there, vertical from this point, vertical, and then we can close it there. And then this will be our box. And it looks weird because we don't use one point perspective that often. The one time that we use one point perspective, and you can see a lot, if you check out uh, Scott Robertson's drawings, and then he has the, the vanishing point there. Well, that can, let, let, let's keep it here so I don't confuse you. But then he has these, uh, he uses sort of a fisheye lens. And then he has a, the really, um, it's gonna be an ugly car but he has those really cool perspective cars with the nice bend in them and then super sci-fi sort of pickup truck looking sexy vehicles yeah definitely just go and check out scott robertson it's uh that man is a beast but yeah, I'm not putting a lot of effort in there, but you, you can see it, 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 it gives this nice fisheye lens effect. And I can go into this later on, but I would say this is not necessary to know for industrial designer. So one point perspective, right? I can, I can draw a quick cube here as well. And we're just gonna do that through this one that was correct and that one, and then just let's call it like that. And that's gonna be the end. And then let me make these outer lines a little bit stronger, so it pops. There we go. And this is the one uh, vanishing point, so one, one point perspective. But this is not really used because it's just not, not, not that correct. Let me go to the two point perspective. That's number two. So we have our horizon line here, HL. Well, it's not exactly straight. There we go, that's the straightest one. So this is it. I'm gonna put the vanishing point one here and vanishing point two here. And now if I want to draw a box, it's gonna one line here, one line here. So I'm gonna construct the verticals and I say, let's draw from there. Let's connect. Almost, yeah, there we go. And now to connect these two, I'm actually gonna move my hand because the other way is just too uncomfortable for me. And then draw the verticals. And I'm gonna come a little bit higher. Let's say, let's turn it a little bit higher. Let's say from here. So from this point, we go to that vanishing point. Yeah, there we go. And then from this point, we go to that vanishing point. There we go. And these two connect. So again, that vanishing point. There we go. And we only have to do is connect this one to vanishing point two. There, and now we have 
our box in a nice perspective. So as you can see, each side of the box goes towards one of the two vanishing points. So each line uh, goes to the two vanishing points. And to explain this a little bit further, let me extend these verticals. And then we're gonna do a flatter one here. So from this point, goes there, goes there. And then we have one, two, three, so we need another connection here. Let me see if I can do this angle, yeah. Almost managed, and from this to that one. Nope, it was a bit high, yeah, there we go. So this is the bottom, and let's say from here, there. So we're starting to have too many lines, and that's, that's why nobody really constructs them this much, but you need these lines to understand them. And from here it was this, yeah, so from here you have to go there. So the, the idea is of all fundamentals is that you have to understand the underlying principle of what you're drawing. So this would be the same box, well not the same box because it's a squeezed one, but it's on top of it. So then this is in shadow. All right, so let's add another box on top of here. So let's, this is one point from here to that vanishing point. Let's speed this up a little bit. So as you can see, we have these three boxes in nice perspective. And the, the thing is, the closer your two vanishing points are together, the more distorted the box is going to be. So this box is sort of okay because it's not a big box, but if I would come, if I would say, I wanna extend it down, uh, let me spread this construction up a little bit as well. So yeah, you can see it is becoming less and less natural looking. You have these, so you, when you, when you look at video games and you're not into it and you pause it for a second, you can look at the edges of the screen and you will have these sort of very skewed boxes. And then this is also in shadow here. There we go. So yeah, and I could, I could give you even another example. Let me speed this one up as well. So if we draw a bigger box, And you can see that the distortion is becoming stronger and stronger. So because we have two planes here, this is, this is the lower plane and this is the higher plane. Because the two vanishing points are so close together, we have two completely different shapes here. And this is, this is what happens when you have two vanishing points so close together. So usually what we have, I'll give you another example is you have the, the horizon line, and then you have one vanishing point here, VP2, and VP1 is somewhere off the screen, so somewhere there. I'm not gonna draw that. So then I'm gonna use this to help me go, and I'm not gonna go all the way there. So this is, horizon, this is one vertical line, let me put another one. From here we go there. And let's say it's somewhere, uh, do you see my little finger? Okay, that's that's gonna be ha little finger of Game of Thrones. Yay, good joke. Anyways, so this is my little finger, and this is where the vanishing point one. So VP1 is my little finger. So I'm gonna go from there. Yes, and then the other one would be something like this. And then vertical line. Yeah, let's connect. And then from little finger to this line would be something like this, and then this goes to VP2, like that, yeah. And little finger to this one. There we go, let's do some corrections. All right, let's take away my little finger. There we go, let's make this pop again.
And this, if you can see, I'm gonna compare these two. This is way more distorted, this is way more natural looking. And this is what you get when you have, so that's, that's, what, that's the difference, the two uh, vanishing points are close together, meanwhile, with this one, one is here and one was outside somewhere here. And then usually what we do is really we just try to keep the vanishing points in mind, but we don't draw them. And then you just try to draw somewhat parallel lines, but obviously they can't be parallel because they have to go into a vanishing point somewhere. So I know that these two go like this. And that goes there. Nope. See, that's not good. It has to go there. A little bit like that. This goes up, this goes up, also up, also up, and then there's another line here that should be something like that. Yeah, and then, yeah, there we go, and then we're connecting these two. So the idea, I'm trying to make these parallel. This line and this line, and obviously it can't be parallel. So if I if I see how it's parallel, then I bank it just a little bit, so somewhere they meet. And then let me connect and sorry, let me make the outlines a bit stronger. There we go. So now, now we have these two somewhat in the in the same perspective. So that's the two point perspective, and then let me also explain the three point perspective. So this is where I'm going to put my horizon line, VP1, VP2, and this is going to be VP3. So now if I create the bottom, also from there, and then from there, all right. So for our box, this is going to be the bottom of it. And now we go from each of these points to VP3. It's gonna be one, this is gonna be two, this is gonna be oh, three, this is gonna be four. I messed up a little bit because usually it's better to have these right above them, but it's okay. And another point. But this is still, everything is too close together and the, and the box is too big. If I would have drawn it a smaller, it would look more natural. So let me just do a smaller one here next to it. Yeah, so this is when you look up at something and obviously the same works if you, if you look down. And I could draw it, I can also just turn it around. So basically now you're looking down. So the eye is looking down. Obviously when we turn it around is the eye is looking up. So this is the three point perspective, but we never have it this this strong. What we have is the same thing as, as I, I showed you before where you have the vanishing point outside. So I'm just gonna put down the horizon line and I'm not gonna put any sort of vanishing points, but I'm gonna say, okay, this is the horizon and we have a couple of buildings or a couple of blocks. And as you can see, they will meet somewhere but they're, that's way far away, so I can't see that. And then I'm gonna draw the middle line. And then I put the vanishing points also all the way out there. So one will be here, and another one will be there. And now you're like, okay, but then if I want to draw another box next to it, what do I do? Same idea, I'm gonna, so you follow this line and so this would be parallels, right? But instead of drawing parallels, I always turn these a little bit. So here you turn it a little bit more, and here you turn it even a little bit more. So I'm gonna take these two lines, this one, and that one. There we go. And then you just follow this, follow this line, and I come a little bit lower. This is the same idea. So if I follow this line, it will go there. But if I come lower, this angle has to uh, come down, so be smaller. I put it here, see, it's the, it's the same idea. So these should be meeting in one uh, horizon point, uh, vanishing point, sorry. So I'm taking this one, same for this. So I know how this one actually is almost inside. Look at that, it is inside. Well, yeah, barely. But then I know from here, I go there. And I can also do, okay, so this would be a parallel line. 
but I don't want it parallel, I want it a little bit that way. And this is a bit too strong, but still, I will choose that. There we go. Now, we have two buildings. I let, I'm just gonna add one more, I'm gonna speed it up for a bit. There, so this would be the, the three-point perspective that we're talking about. But in industrial design, we mostly use the two-point perspective. And that's it for now. Next time I'm going to talk about lines, line thickness, and also about ellipses and how we do ellipses in 3D. Uh, hope you liked this video. And if you liked it, please think about clicking that like button and also subscribe maybe. And yeah, if you have any suggestions, please feel free to leave a comment. And that's it. See you next time. Bye-bye.